TDR Conference 2016 Prophecies. In Arabia, in the peninsula, when young girls were born, so when someone came and told the father, you've been, you know, you've just had a female child born to you, as in to your wife, his face used to go dark in shame and anger. And then he used to contemplate, how do I rid myself of this musiba? And for some of them it was instantaneous, for some after some time, but they used to, and for some they didn't do it, true, but many of them would go and dig a hole and bury the child alive. So this was the situation of women in Arabia. And if you leave the Arab Peninsula and go to the subcontinent of India, their womankind had other challenges. Traditionally in Indian culture, and I don't mean Bollywood of today, I mean India. In India, all the men used to marry younger girls. So by default, naturally, it could be anticipated that the man would die first. And yet when she died, the culture and the religion required, because the Hindus burned their dead alive, I mean burned their dead after, after their dead. So when he used to die, the culture required that that young girl be burnt alive with his corpse. So they used to make the firewood. She used to be made to sit on top of it. And then the fire used to be lit. And you can naturally imagine that when there's fire under you, you'll jump. You'll run. You'll scream. So they used to get these long sticks and hold her down from afar. The practice is called sati. It was there even when the British went there in India. When they colonized India, it was there. And they made it illegal after some time, as in the Britain, the British. So that was the situation of women in the subcontinent. And if you left the subcontinent and move a little that way towards Persia, where our background is, there the king was in the process of marrying his own sister so that he could have purebred royal children. And you might think, Ustaz, let's go to the enlightened Europe. In Europe, they didn't consider women to be human. And then later they said, the church, the Catholic church, that she is human, but defected. And that she is inevitably evil. She has Eve in her, as in Mother Eve, who took man out of the favor of God, made him eat from the forbidden tree. And in case you're wondering, what about our cousins, the Jews? Even today... The Orthodox Jew gets up every morning and makes this dua. Blessed be God, Lord of the universe, that thou hast not made me a woman. Thank you, Ya Rab, for not making me a woman. And the girl gets up and says, Blessed be God for making me in accordance to his will. So you understand that she was downtrodden, oppressed, killed, buried alive, 
burnt alive. Do you understand that the world was not a good place for women at that time? And I don't want you to think this was unanimous. There were certain women who came out of this oppression, strong-willed people who faced, you know, the, um, the difficulties of society and the difficulties of, the, you know, the world of their time. And, uh, and one of them is uh, Hin, the, do the wife of Abu Sufyan. You know, and you read the poem that she says um, in the Battle of Uhud, نَحْنُ بَنَاتُ طَارِقْ نَمْشِي عَلَى النَّمَارِقْ إِن تُقْبِلُوا نُعَانِقْ أَوْ تُدْبِرُوا نُفَارِقْ We are the daughters of Tariq, used to walking on cushions. So they were, but these were an immensely acute minority. Most of them, most of women, were bearing the brunt of oppression. Some because they were blamed for committing the original sin, as was the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Others, because they brought them shame or poverty. Others, for, uh, you know, an array of reason. And in this climate, Islam came. Allah honored the world with Islam. And one of the first revelations of the Prophet that Allah Rabbul Izza revealed to the Prophet is the verses, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ And on the day of judgment when that infant girl will be asked, بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ For what sin were you killed? Or when the little babe asks in the day of judgment, Father, for what sin did you kill me? Establishing that in this deen of Muhammad, this is haram. At the days where he was finding his own survival difficult, he was preaching the emancipation of womankind. Let the poor girl live. And not only that, Islam called the news of a female birth glad tidings. قال تعالى وَإِذَا بُشِرَ أَحَدُهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى When they are given the good news, the glad tidings of a female birth. And Allah Rabbul Izza called the female child a gift of God. وَهَبَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ أُنَاثَى Allah gifts whomever He chooses women, as in girls, as in, babe, as in children who are girls or females, and gifts whomsoever He chooses with male offsprings. Do you see that this, the deen of Muhammad, initially women are very downtrodden, now the deen lifted them up. So the deen reigned supreme. In 23 years, the whole of the Jazeera fell to Islam. So what type of culture do you think this new country and this new religion and this new system had? This system considered the birth of a female child a gift of God. It considered the news of her birth glad tidings. When she was a girl, and in your house, as in your her father, the Prophet said, if you bring three girls up and manner them and teach them till they reach independence or they move to their, to their husband's houses, you will be resurrected next to me like this in Jannah. So the Sahaba said, you know, he's, I don't have three daughters. You know, this is not my calling. What about two, O Prophet? So he said, whoever has two daughters and brings them up, as in teaches them and prepares them until they reach independence and go into their husband's houses, will be resurrected next to me like this in Jannah. And the Ashab say, had we were to ask for one, he would have said the same. So now this new nation, the Muslim nation, was looking at women, and at young daughters, with an eye of respect, she's the gift of God. 
She is my salvation in the Akhirah. In another hadith in the Sahihain, the Prophet says, whoever brings up daughters and cherishes them and nourishes them and maintains them and till they reach, you know, an age of independence, they will be sufficient uh, protection for him from the fire. So do you want to see the product of this new society? Who yesterday hated womankind. Now they ask the leader of this organization and this religion, Muhammad Mustafa, Man ahabbu nasi ilayka ya Rasulullah. O Prophet of Allah, who is the most beloved of humankind to you? Who do you love the most, ya Rasul? And one of these narrations is from Amr ibn al-As. And the scholars say he was sitting in front of the Rasul. And the attention the Prophet used to give each individual person, they used to feel like I am the most beloved person to him. So wanting to establish this, you know, Amr, that I am the most beloved to the Prophet, he asked him, who is the most beloved of people to you? So the Prophet said, Aisha, my wife is the most beloved person to me. So Amr says, Min al-Rijal, from the men, O Prophet, khalas, you love her, from the men, who do you love? Because he's hoping it's him, because of... So, the Prophet said, Abuha, her father, Abu Bakr, do you see? That's her as a wife. Then as a mother, the, the Sahabi came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who is the most deserving of my friendship and companionship? He said, your mother. The cousin of the Prophet Ibn Abbas, a man came to him, I have committed murder. Is there any way out for me? Forgiveness in the court of Allah. He said, do you have a mother? So his students said, Ya Ibn Abbas, we don't see the link. What does the mother have to do with, with his case of murder? He said, I don't know a path more direct to Jannah than servitude to the mother. I don't know a more easier path and direct path and faster path and shorter cut to the pleasure of Allah than to serve the mother. So in this nation of Muhammad alayhi afdalu salatu wa atammu taslim, the one that was buried yesterday became the gift of God. And imagine, Hajj comes. What is the product of this nation? The man has his mother on his back. On his back. For those of you that have been to Hajj, Hajj is a difficult exercise. And he has her on his back, on his shoulders, and he's doing the tawaf. Proud and happy that I am serving on my old mother. And the pleasure of God is in this, and the pleasure of the Prophet is in this. And so happy he is in this act that he looks at Ibn Umar. Ya Ibn Umar. Have I repaid the kindness of my mother? I have served. I am carrying her doing the rounds of tawaf. Have I served? Have I repaid her kindness? And Ibn Umar said, not even an ounce of it. You're indebted to her for till eternity come. So this was the status that women occupied in the world of Islam. Donate now. Go to thedailyreminder.org slash donate.